Well, I'm going to use this recipe to explain exactly what a base glaze is. So what this person did was they put everything together to equal 100. They did have a leftover 01, which I mean, you could just ignore that in the end. Um, but you can see how you get uh, kind of hundredths of percentages. Um, this is based on a percentage. These numbers over here are all of my calculations to add everything into one bucket. Um, but you can see right here that there's silica, this would be um, frit 3134, nepheline cyanite, whiting, calcined kaolin, EPK, which is Edgar plastic kaolin, um, custer feldspar, magnesium carbonate, and finally the colorant is copper carbonate. Um, so what happens with a base glaze is all of the elements that make like the clear or make the matte or make the uh, shiny glaze are all put right here and then the colorant whatever makes that thing a different color is always added at the end and it's not part of your hundred percent um, so whenever you're seeing a glaze you're seeing a base glaze which is a hundred and then you're seeing the addition of copper carbonate um, and in this one I had two choices I had five percent or seven percent so what I might have done I didn't actually do the two I ended up just doing five percent but I might come back later and I might write a glaze that says 6B and then I'll add 7% because it's the cedar green base um, but then I'm adding the 7% so that's going to be uh, how I'll keep track of which one is which um, and this number here is just for my reference your numbers might be different and if you're only doing one glaze you don't even need that um, uh, but for me, I'm going to see if this works on my clay. There's different glaze effects that, uh, or defects that might happen uh, with this base glaze. If it doesn't work, uh, there's some things I can do, like if it starts to crackle, I can add some boron to this recipe, and our best boron is going to be Gersley borate. Uh, and every glaze, as you can see, has silica. It has some sort of feldspar. Um, these are kind of uh, formulated for individual um, uh, melting temperatures and effects. Uh, nepheline cyanide, I can't remember what it is. I'll have to look these up again. But <laughs> uh, they each have a specific um, role in making a glaze making it uh, elastic enough for the clay and because as you know in the kiln the clay shrinks uh, and it uh, enlarges um, during the firing process so however this is formulated is usually for that shrinkage process um, so you want to have clay you want to have silica uh, and then you, you want to have your fritz, which are the things that lower the melting temperature of the clay. Uh, you also usually want to have some sort of calcium, maybe potassium, uh, and some other elements, maybe nitrogen. It's very much like soil, actually, um, if you think about it. And so what all those things do is build the bones of the glaze, and then the silica kind of like makes all that stuff form together. So then you'll have like a gloss or a matte or a clear or an opaque. Um, and generally it will just be white, usually uh, clear or something kind of off-white maybe until you actually add the colorant. So for your glaze test, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make yourself a test tile. So you can make a very simple test tile just by making a coil squishing it flat on one side and just making yourself some texture. Uh, this would be the most simple way to make a test tile. You could also do whatever you want, like make a little animal or something. Um, but if you don't want to spend a lot of time uh, and you want to show some texture, this is the best way. And what's nice about this is on these high spots, you can see where the glaze is going to break, where it's um, maybe going to highlight a color or where it's going to 
you're going to be able to see through the clay. Um, and then you'll have these pulling areas. And also you want to make sure your test tile is standing straight up. You don't want a test tile that you fire on the ground um, because you won't get the same effect as you would uh, for most of your stuff. The only flat thing we fire generally are plates. Most of your stuff is going to be like a cup or a vase or something that's standing up. So this is going to give you the best um, understanding of the effect that you're going to get. Also make sure when you're doing your test tiles, do one white and one red. Because uh, you never know, even if you hate red clay or hate white clay, you might end up needing to use it at some point and having two test tiles. Uh, will especially help me to see what your your glaze will look like on two clays. So the next thing you're going to do with your test tiles is you're going to write your name in the bottom. Uh, I'm going to write my glaze test number on the bottom and then I'll know um, what glaze that exactly is. But if you're doing this for class you'll want to put uh, your name here so that we can know which test this is. So this is going to be a demo on how to use um, one of these three beam measuring devices um, and how to basically measure a glaze for a test. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to balance this. So what you want to do is get the container that you're going to put everything in. You're going to put it on the one side. And then at Biola, there is a beam at the very back, which I do not have. And there's a little fine adjustment knob at the very back. And you just move it back that way if uh, this is too heavy. If, the way you'll know if it's too heavy is that this will go down. Um, if it's too light, it will go down the opposite way. Uh, I do not have that, so I've made my own little balancing thingy here. Um, so if this is too heavy, then I want to push it this way a little, and if it's too light, I'm going to push it, oops, that way a little. Um, but my system is imperfect, so that's how I'm going to balance mine. So what you do when you're trying to see if this thing is set correctly is you're just going to push it down, and then you want this um, indicator to go as high up above zero and as low down exactly the same above and below zero. Um, so you let go, see it went up to here and then it didn't even go below zero. So what that's saying is that that is too heavy right now. So I need to move the weight towards the uh, front indicator. So I just move it a little bit. I'm actually going to move it a little more. When this starts to go right in the middle, you know it's very close. So a little high. So it's a little too much on that side still. As you can see, it's a little high. I'm going to move that over a little more. And then try it again. And you can still see it was a little higher than low, so I can just move this over a little. When you start getting this close though, there is another fine adjuster knob um, and that fine adjuster knob is right here. So if you twist counterclockwise, it's going to go that way and put weight that way. If you twist clockwise, it's going to go that way and put weight towards this side of the beam. So that's kind of how you fine adjust things. Now what you want to do is get a recipe. I'm going to use this recipe here, Green Dragon Mat. I got it off the internet and it's a cone 6 glaze. So what I did was I took all of the glazes, all of the amounts that it said to do for each one, and I wrote it down. And then what I did is I added each by 2, 44 plus 18 to get 62, uh, 62 plus 8 to get 70, um, 70 plus 3 to get 73, and so on and so forth. Uh, most glaze recipes will equal 100 um, if you're not including like the additions which are colorants and or a floating device which is bentonite. It helps the, the glaze float because some of them tend to uh, stick to the bottom. Um, this one is written completely wrong because <laughs> the bentonite is included here 
uh, the titanium and the copper are the colorants and they're written at the bottom. Most of them, this amount here would be 100 and then you would add this part here. This person didn't calculate it properly um, because now we don't know what the percentages are. If you do it out of 100, you know what the percentage of each chemical is and it's much easier to translate that into gallons. But just for the sake of testing, we will use this glaze because I haven't done it yet. Um, so the first thing that they're asking for is 44 Cornwall stone. So I am going to set this to 40. And then I'm going to set this to 4. This is your 1s, your 10s, and your 100s. Um, so if it says, like, this is in grams, right? Uh, grams right here. Um, if it's in something else, you'll have to do a conversion, but most people do it in grams. Uh, so what you're going to do is take your Cornwall stone or whatever your first ingredient is, and you're going to scoop it and place it and just keep doing that. Try not to drop ingredients. It's hard for me to do this holding it with one hand, the camera. So... I'm just gonna keep going. Um, also, there's some of the bigger uh, containers in the room and you'll have a scoop. So if you have a scoop, you can kind of just like slowly make additions until what you're gonna see is the um, little piece here is gonna start moving up. Make sure you're wearing a mask because there is dust coming out of this. So it should start moving, there it is. So then you're gonna test it. You're gonna just push it down and then let go and see how high and low it goes. And to me, that's, that's like good enough. Um, it went a little bit less high than low, but it's so close, like that's literally like ridiculously close. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shift all the ingredients to the side like this. Cause what I'm gonna do is add every ingredient into here. So my next measurement now is going to be the 44 plus the 18, which is 62. Um, so what I'm doing then is I'm going to move this to 6 and this to 2. So now I have 62. Um, if you had like 10.5, for example, or let's just say 62.5, then you would move this to right here which is 0.5 and if it was like 0.55 then you would just go in between the two decimal point places which are these two um, lines so this would be 0.5 this would be 0 0.52 0 0.55 0 0.57 maybe 0 0.6 so however far over or close to one of these you will have your uh, hundredths place. And usually glaze recipes don't get more specific than that. Um, so let's do our 62, which is what the recipe says. And that will be whiting. So whiting for me is over here. So I am going to take that out. And you want to be really careful with these glaze elements. Um, Cause if you put too much in and you're putting them all in the same place, uh, like I am, then you're going to run into a lot of problems. If you want to use a different container, you can weigh everything in a separate container and not have to do the mathematics to figure this out. And then if you got too much, and you could just take that one part out. So um, I'm going to now put my whiting in in another section of this. Uh, and see, I got too much in, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this out and see how that affects it. I'm going to take some more out and see how that works. That's way too much. So when you put this in your, your container, make sure you mound it. The only time you probably won't be able to take stuff out is when you have like five grams of something that you need to remove, in which case uh, that's just, uh, you just need to be very careful when you're weighing that.
So that looks perfect. It went as high up as down. Always put your chemicals away and put the lids on so you know what chemical is what. So the next one I have is zinc oxide, which means I'm going to move the six over to the seven. And then I'm going to move the two over to zero. And then, so now I have 70 set, and then I'm going to find my zinc oxide, which is a little tiny container here. And then since this is such a small amount, um, I will continue to add it the same way. But I have to be very careful because it's only like eight grams. So what I'm gonna do is keep this in here and I'm just gonna shake it out and just sift it out until that that beam starts to move. I am still mounding this up on its own in case I overdo it by a little. And sometimes some of these chemicals weigh more than other chemicals. So you just kind of have to go slow. Um, and see what happens. So there you can see it started to go up, so now let's test it. And I put in a little too much, so now I'm just gonna take out a little. I'm gonna test it again. And it's still a little too much, so I'm gonna pour what I just had in my thing out and I'll take a little more. And I'm only grabbing the zinc oxide. Tiny bit more. So, ooh, that's a big chunk. I think that's the end of the chemical I have that I can just like grab. That might have been something else. I can see it right over here, so I'm just gonna grab some more. So that there looks perfect. Um, so I'm done with my zinc oxide, and now I need EPK and it says three, so I'm going to get my EPK. And then I'm going to set this to 73 as per my calculations. And that's like gonna be a very little amount. So I'm just gonna start with this. I'm gonna mound it in the middle of the last one and just wait for this to start to move. You can kind of see I'm going very slow. So I'm going to test it right there. And it's almost there, a little bit more. I'm going to test one more time. Just a tiny bit more. And there you have it, that's perfect. So I'm going to put the EPK away. And you might want to clean your spoon in between each one because the chemicals will start to uh, get stuck to it. So my next one is going to be bentonite, which is 5. So I'm going to set this to 78. And then I'm going to pick up my bentonite, which is should be over here. And I'm going to do the same thing. it up in one little area in case I need to take some out and that right there will change the measurement so try to uh, not do that Oops. so what I'm gonna do is just check that it's not enough do a little more check it again and I just need like, a, ah, a tiny amount. I think I put too much in. Yep. So I'm gonna take a tiny bit out. Dang nub. Dang nub. 
Take some more out. Just a tiny bit more. Make sure your container that you use is completely clean because even if you had food in there, there's some elements in the food that could um, change this, especially like yogurt, things like that have calcium and calcium is a, an actual glaze ingredient. Not that it would change it much, but these are very small amounts. So the next thing I'm gonna put is copper carb. So I'm putting this to 82 because we're adding four grams. Make sure my spoon is clean. And then I'm gonna add some little bits here and try not to put too much in at one time. Four grams of copper carbonate is actually quite a bit because it's very lightweight, but just go very slow. Make sure you have a little mound so if need be you can take some of it out. And I'm just going to check that. And that's perfect. So just make sure you check it before it goes all the way up to the zero mark. So then I'm going to take my titanium dioxide and I need to set this to 86. So right in the middle there. And then add this. Um, at the end you'll start noticing that there's no place for mounds, so that will happen. Um, just be very careful. Remember to put little bits in at a time. Don't go super crazy. And I'm noticing that that's starting to move, so I'm putting even less in. Just shaking it in very carefully. And then I'm going to test it and see. And that's actually a little too much. So I'm really in trouble because this is going to be hard. There we go. That's perfect. Uh, actually, I can put a tiny bit back in. It's good enough. Good enough. Alright, so then I'll put my titanium dioxide away. So now that you have all the ingredients together, what you're going to do is you're going to add uh, a tiny bit of water to them so that you can mix them. And what I like to do is use something that's kind of on the stiff side to mix with. So I have these kind of like glaze or clay tools that I use. I'm just going to stir it around um, and add a tiny bit more. You don't want it too thick because if you want to test right away, you don't want to wait for the uh, water to evaporate off. Um, so you'll, you'll want to kind of do it a little on the thicker side than you would um, dip it. Because you want to get all the glaze as possible in this slurry. Um, all those little glaze particles that you put in there and you want this mixed as well as you can. Uh, we are going to sieve this into another container. Um, so make sure you have at least like a container that you're mixing into. If you decide to do all the elements separately, make sure you have one that you weigh everything separately, um, then the one that you put everything into, and then make sure that you have a third one that you sieve all of the elements into. So for me, I'm only gonna have two because I put all the elements in here and weighed them out with my math. And now I'm gonna sieve them into an, a different container. <laughs> so. You'll get one of these sieves and they do have numbers. Uh, 100 would be very fine. I have 40, which is less fine. Um, 
And if your recipe doesn't say, I mean, 40 is fine, 100 is fine. Um, but some of the recipes are very specific, like you need to do this amount. So the first thing I usually do is just scrape that in there into the sieve. Uh, the next thing I do is I get a glaze brush with a tiny bit of water and I clean all this into there. So I'm just gonna put some more water in here and try and like get as much of this glaze as possible. That will give me the most consistent result um, for when I make a large amount later if I can get as much of this glaze in here as possible. So What's nice about a new container is it all kind of just wants to come out. And then when you sieve it through this um, sieve, what you want to do, and I could actually swish some more water in there just for cleaning. Swish that around get all that stuff and then I'll use that to clean this out. You'll want a spatula just to scrape all that through. Don't use metal or wood scrapers or hard plastic because there's a mesh in the bottom and they will get ruined if you use that. So make sure you only use a spatula. And again I want to keep all of that glazed material so I'm just putting it with my stuff to clean. And then I'm just going to sieve it through into my new container, hoping to get every little bit that I can, just for consistency. So you can see also how the clay, the glaze elements are getting scraped and um, getting kind of cut up into the sieve. You can kind of see streaks of color, usually like white or turquoise in there. So I'm going to just keep going. If you notice it's kind of hard and it's hard to uh, sieve through and it's um, too thick, you can add water to it, uh, but just try and use as little water as possible so that you can dip right away your test tile. Otherwise, you might have to wait like a week to test it. Um, as it is, you might have to wait a couple of days to test just because it's pretty hard not to use too much water. So then, make sure you get all the glaze off of your spatula. Then, you're going to take that dirty water that you had cleaned your container with. You're going to clean off your spatula as much as possible with that water. Again, that's in keeping with all the stuff that you want to, all those glaze elements and particles. You're not going to get it perfect, but that's good enough. And then same with this little tool here. I'm just going to clean that off. And then finally, try and get as much of this into here. And then swirl around the water um, to get as many glazed pieces, particles as possible, down into my my glaze formula in there. And honestly, that's probably as good as you're going to get it. Um, there's also all the glaze in the bottom here. And then you just kind of scrape that out with your brush and get it all into this tub. And it looks like I'm going to need a little bit more water, so what I'm going to do is put it back into my old container. And then dip my brush in there. And then it's very important, once you're done, 
to label this, so I already wrote down my glaze color. Um, and then I'm doing a lot of glaze tests, so I have a numbering system. So 4A, this is my fourth glaze, base glaze, and A just means that it's the first um, colorant. I haven't put water into these yet, but um, you can see these are Cindy's Clear, there are three. And then A is the Jade Olive, and then B is the, um, gosh, what does that say? Something blue f float. I'll have to look at my notes. And then here you can see Dolita and Dolita. This one is blue and it's 2A, so that's the second one I'm testing. And then Oatmeal is 2B. So on my tile, I'm going to write 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B, 5A, 6A, 4A, and that one's 1A. So each tile is going to have those numbers so I can keep track of this with my notes. Because um, when you're doing a ton of glazes, it's easy to get very confused with what you're doing.